by now you also know that two compounds mix with each other have a chemical change to create a product. But let me point out something really interesting here. It is also possible that two compounds can undergo a chemical change to create more than one kind of a product. Here are some examples to understand that. Carbon and oxygen combine to produce not only carbon monoxide but also carbon dioxide. Hydrogen combines with oxygen to produce water as well as hydrogen peroxide. Copper undergoes a chemical change to produce cupric oxide and cuprous oxide. So what you understand here is there can be more than one type of a product in a chemical change. Considering these facts stated that chemical changes follow law of multiple proportions which is the third law as we read at the beginning of the session. Now let me take you through an experiment and explain how this law holds true for chemical changes. In this experiment we take two clean and dry porcelain boats. We then weigh each of them Now introduce these two boats into a combustion tube. Now Fix two single hole rubber corks carrying glass tubes at both ends of the tube. Then fix the combustion tube on a stand. You can see the setup of this experiment in the image. Now you have to start with passing hydrogen gas into the tube till all the air in the tube is displaced. Now subject the area where the porcelain boats are placed to heat. Please be very careful when you conduct this experiment because hydrogen catches fire easily. So while heating the combustion tube, you should take utmost care. Continue heating the tube and passing hydrogen gas till red copper powder is formed in the boats you have placed. Once you see the red copper powder deposits, stop heating. Then Allow the tube to cool. Take out the boats and weigh them separately. You can get the weight of copper deposit in each boat by subtracting the weights of the empty boats from this weight. Now notice the result of the entire experiment on the table. Let's now understand these observations clearly. experiment with cuprous oxide, x grams of oxygen combines with a gram of copper. So one gram of oxygen would combine with A by x grams of copper. This is simple arithmetic. Now in cupric oxide also y gram of oxygen combines with B grams of copper and therefore one gram of oxygen would combine with B by Y grams of oxygen. Now if you apply the weight values you had noted during the experiment you will find that the ratio of A by X and B by Y is a simple ratio of integers. Applying the values you will find the ratio to be 2 is to 1. What you see here will also hold true for formation of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. In both cases, the weight of oxygen that combines with carbon is in the ratio of 1 is to 2. Also in the case where oxygen combines with hydrogen to form water and hydrogen peroxide, the weights are in the ratio of 1 is to 2. So, from the experiment we conducted, and the various examples we have seen so far, it is clear that the weights of one element that separately combine with a fixed weight of another element bear a simple integral ratio. This law is known as the law of multiple proportions. So you saw how the three laws apply to the chemical changes in nature. 
let's summarize now what all we learned in this lesson we studied three laws of chemical combination law of conservation of mass law of definite proportions and law of multiple proportions the sum of the masses of substances before and after a chemical reaction remains constant mass is neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction in a compound the ratio of masses of the elements is always the same and is independent of its origin two elements can combine to produce one or more than one compound when two elements produce two or more compounds the masses of one element combining with a constant amount of the second element are always a simple integral ratio That's all from the store of chemical combinations for you today. Let's meet another day and learn more interesting concepts. Bye bye.